forget how gray Paris is. Move over! Quit it! Settle down, children. This was your idea. I would never, ever forgive my parents. The winter holidays were going to be a complete disaster. I hated France. I hated Paris. I was missing all the parties in Philadelphia. Why did we have to visit my old maid aunt anyway? I thought I would die. Simply die. Come in, Mathilde. Late, I know. I didn't notice. We have no cakes. I sent Gilbert to the patisserie and he hasn't come back yet. How any son of mine could be so lazy. Oh, Louisa May Alcott is coming to Paris and would love to accept your kind invitation to lunch. Fine, but that's it for socializing. The judging for the salon starts next week. N no visitors, no interruptions. This is my only time to work. And. This came a little worse for wear. Philadelphia. My mother will send me the latest birth announcements, and my father will ask when I'm coming home to get married, like all the other proper young ladies. Oh, this is terrible. They're not well? Worse. Far worse. Oh. You're here, Lois. Why yes. isn't there anyone at the station to meet us? I just this minute got the letter. I, I, I didn't know. You think that Alexander, being president of the Pennsylvania Railway and all, would ensure some special treatment, but no. I did not expect that anyone... It's a Amazing. We found our way. Lois, as I told you, I didn't know you were coming. I have to go. Hush, Robert. No cakes, ladies? Boy, see that our things are brought in and taken to the proper rooms. Well, don't just stand there gaping, Alexander. I am exhausted. Robert? Girls? Move over. Why are you pushing me? Uh-uh. Maybe I can show you around Paris. I hardly think so. for everyone, and your tea, madame. There isn't a soul in France who knows how to make a proper cup of tea. Even the tea on the ship was like seawater, and in first class, too. Make your own cup of tea. First class isn't what it used to be, is it, Alexander? Pastry, Lois, just a little one. This is, this is really quite different from your, your other paintings. Well, I, I'm experimenting. Brighter colors, broader strokes. You and your little hobby. No one ever thought the whim would last. Well, three galleries show my work now. Well, it's a pity no one's ever heard of you in America. Quit it! Stop being so tiresome. Stop it! <laughs> you know, I'm, 
thinking of starting my own little art collection. I saw the paintings you chose for the Havemeyers, and I must say I quite like them. That modern junk. The new Impressionists. Manet, Pissarro. You can't make head nor tail of them. I told you, Alexander, the old masters are the thing. My salon walls are the palest of green. A nice landscape would go well. well you do some nice things, though, Mary. You are just like Mrs. Daphne Chisholm at home. She dabbles in paints, too. Incredibly intricate little flowers on plates. Doesn't she do a nice job, Alexander? Mrs. Chisholm? Lois, I think you can hardly compare Mary's work to someone who paints on plates. Well, at least you can use the plates. <laughs> We're going to clean this up immediately. He wrecked my painting. They're overtired. I don't care what he did, young lady. Alexander, don't raise your voice. Out, oh, out, out, all of you. If you can't behave yourself, there is a pension across the way that would be glad to have you. If you don't want your brother's family, your own flesh and blood, why don't you just say so? Come along, children. Children will be children. If you want us to go. No. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm sorry I lost my temper. Of course you're welcome here. How long can you stay? We planned a month. A whole month? Uh, fine. Believe me, it's not my idea, but Alexander missed his sister, didn't you, dear? But don't take it personally, Mary. I just loathe Paris at this time of year. It's so damp, so cold, so bleak. Uh, well, um, I, I was hoping for some more time to, to get to know the children, but um, since you're here, it would be a shame not to go south for a week or two or three. The weather is so much nicer there. Do you mean St. Tropez in all those places? Yeah, St. Tropez, you'll love it. I hear that if you can stand the primitive creatures who live there and jabber away in a foreign language and eat too much garlic, too, then they say it's quaintly pretty. Have you been? Uh, yes, I have braved those jabbering primitives who dare to speak their own language in their own country. And yes, it is, it is quite pretty. Oh, let's do that, Alexander. Let's go south. Whatever makes you happy, my dear. the window it's freezing hey there's a little dog down there where near that stone wall i'm gonna climb down and get it you'll break your neck sounds good to me Catherine. i told him to close it forget her i can climb down this trellis I dare you. No problem. I'm gonna get the dog. Mother won't let you keep it. Ah! Ah! Robert, how dare you ruin my holiday? Creature away. Shoo -shoo. Catherine locked him out. He wouldn't close the 
window. Can I help? It's fractured in two places. I've put a splint on to keep him from moving it too much. It will have to stay on for a minimum of four weeks. Try to keep him from being too active. I don't believe this. We just decided to travel south. It might be a little awkward, but uh, traveling will do him no harm. Oh, how wonderful. For you, I mean. She has a high fever. How dare you children be so inconsiderate? I'm sure Elsie will feel much better in the morning. I highly doubt it. I was so looking forward to St. Tropez. Fine. Lois, we will go. The only decision, really. But the children should stay. A good decision. No, 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 not a good decision. No, I think it's perfect. It will give the children a chance to get to know their aunt. Hmm? It's important that you understand. I, I'd love to spend lots of time with you, but I have a, a great deal of work to do right now, and it can't be put off. You'll have to amuse yourselves. Your, your parents left you lots of, of books and toys. So. I, I can't work with people looking over my shoulder. I simply have to finish this painting before the end of the week. Why could be that important? The Salon of Paris is the most prestigious exhibit an artist can be a part of. To be accepted by the Salon is to be, well, accepted. Women weren't even allowed to exhibit there until a few years ago. It is an honor. Fine. Did you do this? Yes. Next year for my coming out party, mother's having my portrait done by one of the most famous artists in Philadelphia, Simon de la Fontaine. Have you heard of him? No. Well, everyone who's anyone has their portrait done by Monsieur La Fontaine. Oh, is that so? My party's gonna be wonderful. Mother and I have been planning it for years. Really? How long? Well, it is the most important and influential event of a young girl's life. It can make you or break you socially. All the eligible young men have already asked if they could be my escort. How lucky for you. Yeah, he's an orphan. He's so cute. There are so many socials at home that I'm missing. It is completely unfair. Well, there's always next year. Next year is too late. All the eligible young men will have already been snatched up by the other girls. One boy whose father's so rich they named a street after him. Well, he's in love with me. But Cassandra Wilson has her eye on him, too, and once she gets her hook in, he'll probably forget all about me. Well, if he forgets all about you in a month, he's probably not worth fighting for. Yes, he is. Charles is a Caldwell. His family goes back generations. It would be a good match for me. A good match? You're thinking about a good match at your age? Of course, that's what young ladies do. There's more to life than marriage, my girl. How would you know? Like the others. Don't feed it. We'll never get rid of it. Gilbert, don't encourage them. Robert, Elsie, just... come inside. Not big guy. I don't feel well, and I don't want to be upstairs all on my own. Catherine can keep you company. No, she won't. All she does is brush her hair. You can stay as long as you're quiet.
No, no, Elsie, don't touch. Go sit down. All you do is brush your hair. It drives me crazy. Too bad. Why are you using all dark colors? Because... Because that's the traditional style, and the salon is very traditional. I like bright colors. Blue is my favorite, but I like yellow and red, too. So do I. You're drawing me. No, no, don't, don't. don't. Travel pass his father gave us. Can I move now? I'm all tingly. Yes. You can move. You want to see it? Mother was wrong. You can paint. Can I paint too? I thought you felt sick. All the bright colors make me feel much better. I feel exactly the same way. make us stay. No, I can't. You're allowed to leave if you wish. You'll have some explaining to do to your parents, but from what I've seen, it's obvious you know how to handle them. I want to leave. And Wags doesn't want us to leave either. You can keep him. But he's your responsibility. Please make sure he stays out of my studio. Uh, of course, if, if you're leaving. He stinks. Aunt Mary, thank you. <sighs> I must be crazy. Nothing irritates me more when I show my work to anyone than the compliment, one can feel you are a woman. Oh, I know, I hear that all the time with my books. <laughs> It's an insult. He's a boy dog. What a lucky creature. Homeless one day and a prince the next. I'm jealous. He's the only stray we'll be taking in. I'd let you take me in, but I'd draw the line at the boat. think so. I am an artist. Period. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Catherine. Come in. Come in. I want you to meet my niece, Catherine Cassatt. Catherine, this is Louisa May Alcott. The Louisa May Alcott? 
the same. Oh, I read all your books. Good. <laughs> How old are you, my dear? I'll be 15 in the spring. And what do you want to do with your life? I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> well, it's time you did. I hope you're not one of those delicate creatures who sit around waiting for a bow. When I was your age, no girl could be my friend if she refused to climb a tree. And no boy could be my friend until I'd beaten him in the race. You sound like Joe and Little Women. <laughs> my dear, I am Joe and Little Women. Almost every word from that book came from my diary. I can't tell you how handy it came in later for all of my plots and characters. I like to write, but I don't like anyone to read it. Oh, well, then you absolutely must keep a journal. It helps to sort your thoughts out. I so envy your beautiful home. Legs, no! Peace, the quiet. Elsie, <laughs> get the dog! Oh, dear. <laughs> my goodness, it's like a scene from one of my books. In fact, in my next book, I'll be sure to include it. <laughs> We've got to stop meeting like this. Oh. Montmartre is where most of the artists have their studios. I love to look in gallery windows. There's always something interesting. Look at this. It's a pastel by Monsieur Degas. Look at his lines. His use of color and shadow. I've never seen anything like that except in my dreams. You can't make out the faces. They're all blurry. What kind of portrait could work for you, Catherine? It doesn't look like any of the paintings in the museums. That's what makes it so remarkable. Impressionists. That's what they're called. Oh, of all the painters in the world, Monsieur Degas is the one I would love to know. There's hope for after all. It's a matter of balance. The, the shape of the cup's silvery rim is now almost echoed in the edge of May's hat. I like that. Everything nicely rounded. Broken circles, the, the tray, the objects on it. The ginger jar on the mantel? Exactly. That's why I'm adding the striped wallpaper. Makes a strong contrast. But you painted May with a cup in front of her face. Well, why not? That's how I saw her. I hate it when people sit and stare stiffly out at you from a portrait. Oh, you mean like Monsieur Lafontaine's portraits? My girlfriends, they never look themselves. They look like scared rabbits. I like to catch people off guard. Doing everyday things, not simply staring out from the portrait. Like that. I wanted to catch that sulk on Elsie's face. You put in wags. They just seem to belong. It's a very different painting from anything else I've done. It's much more topsy-turvy. Well, that's because the world has become much more topsy-turvy since we've arrived. If you're not entirely sold on your Mr. LaFontaine, I would be pleased to do your portrait. Oh, I can't. Our mother says I haven't grown into my looks yet. Well, it's the beauty inside that I paint. You, my dear, are your most beautiful when the furthest thing from your mind is how you look. Handsome fellow, isn't he? Oh, 
Handsome, I hardly think so. He's rough and crude. You're up to Charles Caldwell's Philadelphia standards, I suppose. Now sit. All right, sit. Dearest Catherine, sort out your thoughts and follow your heart. Love, Aunt Mary. So what do you think of the great salon? It's amazing. My mother, she never takes me in any of her social outings. I am not your mother. to say hello to some of the directors. It's what you do, you know. Now, here is an artist who thinks and feels things as I do. I have to meet the man responsible for such a wonderful painting. Monsieur Degas, the painter, the woman, an American by the name of Mary Cassatt. I can't stand the thought of a woman painting like this. <laughs> she draws far too well. Edgar Degas. Monsieur Degas read for each other. She loves his paintings and he loves hers. We have to figure out how to bring them together. We can write him a love letter. Yuck. No, it's perfect. Dear Monsieur Degas, I am a fellow artist who thinks your work is absolutely brilliant. I would love to meet with you. Please write to me. Signed, Mademoiselle Mary. I could ask you the same thing. We're on an errand. This isn't a great part of Paris to be running around in on your own. Oh, mind your own business. Your aunt would not be happy. She will be very happy, actually. What's going on? We're delivering a love letter to an artist from Aunt Mary. Except it's not really from Aunt Mary. Catherine wrote it. Catherine wrote a love letter? Is that possible? She's lonely. Catherine's lonely? No, Aunt Mary. Oh. 
Are you all right? I'm fine. May I? I said I'm fine. It's a bad spring. I'm not going to get far like that. You Americans are very accident prone. <laughs> We weren't getting along. What will my brother say? Oh, my God, what will Lois say? Calm down. How dare you leave the house without telling me? Maybe you could behave like that in Philadelphia, but you certainly can't under my roof. Oh, thank God you're all right. I was so worried. Yes. What did you do to yourself? Nothing. From Monsieur Degas. He wants to meet with me? He doesn't know me from Adam. Why would he want to meet with me? Isn't he the artist you admire so much? Well, yes, but I, I don't think I should. There's no harm in meeting with him. Well, with any luck, Aunt Mary won't be an old maid much longer. She's not the only one. What? Catherine loves the gardener. Oh. Catherine's in love with the gardener. Be quiet. My ankle, it hurts so much. Oh, Gilbert, you're so strong. Be quiet, both of you. Oh, Gilbert, kiss me, kiss me. Catherine doesn't know how. She's never been kissed. She told me so. <laughs> you have such a big mouth, Elsie. I can never fall in love with a servant boy. The idea is disgusting and repulsive. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you were there. Don't worry about it. No, they were just bothering me. Catherine, is this wise? You're speaking to a lowly servant, a gardener. Your reputation will suffer. Fine, if you're gonna be like that. I see your ankle is much better. Is it true you've never been kissed? I'm so glad you accepted my invitation. I'm charmed to meet such a talented artist. Far too kind. I'm not kind. I'm brutally honest. This is the one I saw at the salon. Yes. Yes, it is. Did the same painter do these? I beg your pardon? Well, I, I see the draftsmanship, yes, but these are moldy, dark, just nicely done pictures, nothing special, like a tourist, no worse than a tourist, an American tourist. I am an American, but I assure you I am no tourist, monsieur. And this? I don't know. I think you have a problem. A problem? Uh, you can't help it, being a woman. You're too emotional, too English. You paint these women's lives from the inside, looking out. Oh. <laughs> well, if I may say so, monsieur, you paint them from the outside, looking in, as if you're looking through a keyhole. Uh, this, this is ugly. Yes, but it's true. I'm sure you don't want to waste any more of your precious time. I'm just giving you some constructive criticism. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. If I listened to you long enough, I would never paint again. And that, sir, would be a great loss. What are these? Uh, give, give those to me. No. But, but this is good. This is wonderful. It has life and line and texture. Beautiful. 
but with that hint of ugliness without which nothing works. Mademoiselle? I knew I was right. I'd be pleased if you would take part in the next Impressionist exhibit. I wouldn't cross the street for it. Is anything wrong? I made a complete fool of myself with Gilbert. Well, why should you care about Gilbert? He's just a servant boy. Have you ever had a terrible crush on someone? Well, yes, I suppose I have. There was this boy at school. Oh, and I can't believe what I did. What did you do? Pretended it was worse than it really was. And he carried me home. <laughs> well, now he knows I was pretending. I will never play a damsel in distress again for as long as I live. He probably thinks I'm some stupid, ridiculous little American girl. I could die. You don't need to pretend, Catherine. Just be yourself. Yeah, but I'm so confused. How could I feel this way about a servant boy? I mean, Charles, he's wealthy, he's eligible, and every young girl I know has her hat set for him. But we've never talked. It actually feels as if I don't really know him at all. I just realized how impossible it would be to marry someone just because of who their family is and how wealthy they are. I don't see how I can ever marry for anything but love. My mother will have a heart attack. Mm. You can't always live your life by your mother's standards. You do have to make your own decisions. Is that why you moved away and came to Paris? I had to do what my heart told me to do. I realize that I've cut myself off from a lot, but for me, there was no choice. You know, I thought having you children around would bring my creative life to a halt, but it hasn't. You've given me nothing but inspiration. Have you heard from Monsieur Degas? Put that man completely out of my mind. Aren't you ever lonely? Don't you wish you had gotten married? Catherine, for me, marriage isn't everything. My art is everything. There's nothing wrong with being a single, independent woman. You can be someone in your own right. Yeah, but what about children? My paintings are my children. We can't give up on Mr. Dika. She's lonely. What will she do when we've gone? She'll have wags. I think we need to send another letter. Thank you, madam. <laughs> the nerve of this man. Dear Mademoiselle Cassatt, I gladly accept your dinner invitation. What dinner invitation? <laughs> Listen to this. Make sure dinner is served at seven sharp. Don't have any dogs or children around. And if there are any women present, I hope they aren't reeking of perfume. And no flowers on the table. I hate them. Who does he think he is? Please come in. Come in. Down. 
My haven. Faces east. Must have good light. I, uh, I want you to have this. Oh, my. It's beautiful. Dreadful. <laughs> Having put you through such a frightful evening. It was a most interesting <laughs> dinner. I think your dog likes me. <laughs> I was too critical at the studio. I apologize. And I don't do that often. I think you're extremely talented. You know, if you give the paint in the background a scrubbed look, you'll achieve the look of light coming through window curtains. Uh, maybe. Maybe not quite so much, though. Oh, hello. Hello to you. Um, I was just going in. How's your ankle? Better. I'm sorry about the other night. Don't be sorry. No, I apologize. I was just angry at my brother and sister. I didn't mean those dreadful things I said. No, you're right. I shouldn't bother you. You don't. I mean, you aren't bothering me at all. Elsie says you have to fight your way through all your bows at home. She did? Oh. Yeah, I do. Is there someone you know in particular? One. His name is Charles. Charles Caldwell III. I can't compete with that. Can I? Well, I'm glad you had second thoughts about exhibiting with the Impressionists. I, uh... I look forward to our collaboration. I want to thank you for the dinner invitation. I didn't invite you. You did. Here it is. Well, uh, that explains it. The children. Uh, this is Catherine's handwriting. should uh, two confirmed bachelors. Exactly. You know, I never married. 
because I'd be afraid when I finished a painting, my wife would say, what you've done there is very pretty. I'd be afraid that my husband adored me so much that he would think everything I did was beautiful. I'd lose my critical faculties. It just, it just wouldn't work. No. Uh... I suppose I should be going. Yes, yes, I suppose so. Uh, but I would like to uh, check your progress with this painting. May I call on you? Perhaps a uh, day after tomorrow? Yes, yes, I would like that. Maybe I could come for lunch. Children, dogs, yes, but uh, no flowers. I have to go in. So go in. You know I told you about Charles. Charles Caldwell III. Well, the truth is, I don't think he really likes me at all. Then he's a fool. Our parents just, just think we'd make a good match. In fact, I, I don't think I like him at all. <laughs> Go to bed, you little reprobates. <laughs> Maybe I won't get married at all. I will not be an appendage on some man's arm to set goals. And you should too, Elsie. We can't be stricted just because we're girls. I have no intention of being stricted. I'm going to be a famous artist and get married. And I'm going to be a famous writer. And marry Gilbert. And live in Paris with a little garden. And have little babies that I can play with. I'm going to have it all. Children. Mm. What? No arguments, no demands to see what we have brought you. Aunt Mary, can I show them the painting? It's a picture of me in a big blue chair. I sat very still and didn't move a muscle. Oh, the painting. You're here. <laughs> Aunt Mary, let us have a dog. His name's Wag. <laughs> I named him. We cannot bring that creature with us, dear. It won't be allowed in the ship. It's a good likeness. Catherine has grown up. I hardly recognize her. She has a mind of her own. I blame you for that. I have no idea how you managed so well. They honestly get beyond me at times. I cannot thank you enough. I should thank you. You were right. It was time that I got to know my nieces and nephew. They're wonderful children. Would you like a cup of tea? I'd love one. <laughs> Couldn't find a cup of tea in the South. But the wine those people drink, they drink it like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Put hot water in the pot first. I'm going to rent a house in the country, and you can come visit me next summer. Will you be there, Mathilde? What would you do without me? Will she is there? I have a feeling you will. <laughs> I don't know how I can bear to leave. I'll miss Paris. I'll miss Wags. 
I miss my aunt and Mathilde. I miss this garden and I'll miss you. May I? Now they can't say you've never been kissed. Ready. So soon. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to take good care of Wags. I'll be there for you next summer. Young Robert has convinced us to get our own dog when we get home. Dear Aunt Mary, I can't begin to tell you how glad I am that we came to Paris to stay with you. I think it was fate that Robert broke his arm and Elsie came down with the fever. How else would I have gotten to know you? And in knowing you, to, to know myself. That was the first of many wonderful holidays we spent with my aunt. She always said that getting to know Monsieur Degas changed her life and her art forever. Once she broke with the bonds of artistic tradition, she was free to paint in the open style she loved. Her pictures of mothers and children became some of the most sought out works of art in the world. And finally, to her delight, even in America. And we were her models. She painted us all time and time again. And in those paintings, her genius transformed us into people only she knew we could aspire to be.